Good morning. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy week after Easter. So my name is Alice Whitson. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, I'm one of the newer pastors at Village. I'm the pastor for media ministry. If you are watching online, um, I'm usually up in the booth helping to make sure that that worship experience is as good as it can be. So if you haven't seen me down here, it's because I'm not down here very often, so not your fault. (laughs) Um, Okay, announcements. Friendship pads are in the center aisle. If you could fill those out and pass those down. If you are new with us this morning, Pastor Chad would be happy to meet with you after the service. He'll be right over there-ish. So head out this door and go that way or this door and go that way to run into Pastor Chad. Next week... April 14th, we will have the annual meeting of the congregation after the 11 o'clock service in Friendship Hall, which is just that way. Um, We will have a lunch. If you would like to participate in the lunch, details are in your bulletin, but please RSVP to Laura Hobbs. Um, There will also be an annual meeting at our Antioch campus, but again, annual meeting this campus a week from today after the 11 o'clock service. So, I would highly encourage you to be on our email newsletter lists. If you are not on those lists, you can go to villageprez.org slash subscribe to join those lists. The reason why I mention that is because this past Tuesday, we got some sad news that came via that email that Reverend Sally Wright has submitted her resignation. I know. I love Pastor Sally. I know that she has had such a transformational effect on Village Church. She has been so wonderful to us. I know she has literally been in hospital rooms and in living rooms, in prayer, on the phone. Sally has been a constant in prayer and pastoral leadership here at Village, and I'm really sad that she's not gonna be in the building anymore. If you are sad like me, a month from today, on May 5th, Sally will be leading us in worship, she will be preaching for us, and that is our perfect moment to have Sally say goodbye to us, and for us to say goodbye to Sally as well. After this worship service in Friendship Hall, Canby's Market, which is one of our mission partners, is going to be in Friendship Hall explaining to us a little bit more about their ministry and the work they do that is enabled by Village Church and our giving. So I'd encourage you after worship today to head on over to Friendship Hall to learn a little bit more. Okay, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
a loud amen this morning for our Reverberations Village Ringers Choir, yes? Good morning, friends and siblings in Christ. Good morning. What a joy it is for us to gather together in worship. God has indeed called us here together so that we might once again experience the mighty love and grace of our God. So whether you are joining us online or are gathered here in the sanctuary of our Lord, as one community of faith, let us worship God together. I invite you to stand as you are able. And join me in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Join me in our opening hymn, number 509. Please be seated. Dear friends, when we reflect upon our call to be Christ's disciples, his very own hands and feet in this broken and hurting world, we recognize how we struggle sometimes. We do what we ought not do. We fail to do what we should. Our intention does not always line up with our impact, and sometimes we don't intend to do the good and the right thing anyway. Therefore, let us bring our mistakes and our sins to God, where God promises to take them and to mend them, as God works to heal our lives and to, and to amend the world. Friends, I enjoy, invite you to pray with me our prayer of confession that's printed in the bulletin. Let us pray together. Living God, we have journeyed with you once again from the parade to the Last Supper, from the cross to the empty tomb. We have been reminded once again of your power, your love, your goodness and grace. Forgive our short memories. Forgive our small faith. Forgive us for living for ourselves, even after you have shown us the better way. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Oh, friends, hear the good news. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God knits people together through the love of Christ and sets them loose to serve with acts of mercy and reconciliation. 
God is moving this very day to lead us toward that peaceable kingdom where justice shall roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Dear friends, God's world is forming all around us thanks to the amazing power of God's love. And so I invite you to believe in the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear friends, we worship a Lord who traveled, who went from town to town, village to village, house to house, to greet one another in God's name. Jesus went around and taught and healed. He uh, gathered people together in one place and he sent them out into the world two by two to love and to teach and to preach. Everywhere Christ went, he shared the peace of God. So when we gather every Sunday, one of our practices is to do as Christ did, to share the peace of Christ with others. And we practice that in this very space so that when we go outside of here, we can share God's peace as well. This day in this place, I invite you to share, agree one another with the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. So this is the first Sunday after Easter, the second Sunday of Easter, and we last on Easter Sunday we had so many folks, so many kids here. There might be a few kids here with us today, or there's some children who'd like to come forward and join us for our time together. I see, I see one. <laughs> Hi, friend. Come on up. Are there any other children or the young at heart who'd like to come up for our time together? Good morning. Hi. Hi. Can I sit with you? One of the things I love about this time together is it's not just our time. It's all of our time, isn't it? Right? So we have a little message together, and we can also share this time with other folks who are here. And look, we have another guest or two who's coming forward. Hi. Good morning. Can I scoot over and create some space for you, too? Welcome. Hi. Well, hello. Welcome. You want to come on up and have a seat right here with me? Yeah, great. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Please do. Hi, good morning. Hi. Okay, so I want to talk with you a little bit this morning about some things that you might do every day. Are there things you do every day before you go to bed? You brush your teeth. Yes, every day. Do you put toothpaste on the toothbrush? Yeah, and do you sing a little song when you brush your teeth? I do that. I sing a little song so that I make sure I get all those teeth for enough time, right? I do that every day. Is there anything else you do before you go to bed every day? Brush your hair. That's very good. Do you put on, do you change your clothes? Do you put on special clothes to go to bed at night sometimes? Yeah. I have PJs at my home. You have PJs at your home? Yeah, me too. Every night when I go to bed, I do certain things. I, I have certain um, activities that I do to, that I know that I get ready for bed. How about when you wake up every day? Are there things that you do every day when you wake up? Do you brush your teeth again when you wake up? Sometimes? You eat breakfast, that's good. Get, maybe if, you, if, if it's a school day, you might get ready for school. Maybe if it's the weekend, you might get ready to go out and play, right? There are some things that we do all the time that help us remember that it's time for something important, like going to bed or getting up and getting ready for our day. 
When we gather for worship, there are things that we do every time. And that's one of the wonderful things about worship. We have this kind of rhythm, this kind of, um, kind of practice that we do every time we gather so that we know that what we're doing is important. One of the things we do at the beginning of every worship service is we call ourselves together. We think God calls us together, that God brings us together here in this space, sometimes online to connect with us through the internet, and that God is here in the middle of this time so that every time we get together, we offer words, we call a call to worship, and that helps us remember what we're here for, what we're doing, that it's important. And so I want you to think when you're here on Sundays, all the things that we do every single time that you're here, one of them is this time for children, one of them is a call to worship, and these are the things that we do so that we know that we're doing, uh, we're all doing this stuff together, that we're doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. Can you pray with me? Let's pray, okay? Dear God, Thank you for gathering us here. Thank you for worship. Help us find you here so we can find you everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here this morning. Have a good rest of your day. Dear friends, if you have eagle eyes, you'll notice that I am not Miles. Miles is supposed to read our scripture reading this morning. He is one of the youth of our congregation, and he really wanted to be here today. He's not feeling very well today, so I hope that it's okay that in his stead, I lead uh, the reading of our scripture. Please, before we do so, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we read and listen to your word today, remind us that you are speaking to us. Center us in all we hear. Challenge us to do more than listen. And inspire us to act on your word as we go out into your beloved word, world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen to this reading from the Psalms, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord and the Lord answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps those who fear the Lord and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in the Lord. O oh, fear the Lord, you God's holy ones, for those who fear God have no want. The young lion suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. <coughs> Amen. So, one of my favorite places in the world is the J. Mosley Tabernacle at Ferncliff Camp and Conference Center outside Little Rock, Arkansas. My wife, Juliana, grew up going to Ferncliff Camp, and ever since I have known her, Ferncliff has become an important part of my life as well. Every summer, she and I go for a week to serve as chaplains for the summer camp there. We have the privilege and joy to meet and spend the week with 25 or so counselors and 100 or so campers. It is an absolute blast and it is the highlight of our year. So, this past summer, when Juliana and I were there, 
We were standing in the J. Mosley Tabernacle, affectionately called the J. Mo, an open air pavilion of sorts with open sides, concrete floors, and a beautiful roof overhead. Juliana and I were in a last minute huddle, planning worship for the kiddos who were eating their snacks not too far away. The best and worst thing about camp is that you rarely have time to plan anything. Everything is instinct and a willingness to go with the nudges of the Holy Spirit. So we were planning worship, what songs we would sing, what message we would offer, and we were both sort of freaked out. This thing, leading worship at camp, that we both knew ourselves to be called to, and honestly pretty good at, suddenly seemed completely foreign to us. We had totally and completely lost our confidence. It was a Monday night, and Sunday night, the night before, just about an hour after all the kids arrived at camp, a huge thunderstorm blew through the camp. It was loud, there was massive torrential rain, the sky was black, the lightning was unpredictable and jarring. For many of these kids and counselors too, they were not used to being away from home, especially during such a rough storm, and they were understandably shaken. And if you remember, Little Rock had, was very much still recovering from a huge tornado that many of these kids had lived through. This always unsettling thing, a thunderstorm when you're at camp, now had an added layer of recent trauma for these kids, many of whom had lost houses and were very much still recovering. So, needless to say, it was a weird night and no one was calm. When it came time for Juliana and I to lead Vespers that night, the sort of evening worship, it of course had to be inside, which is always a bummer, because it immediately feels claustrophobic, it's too hot, it's too loud, it's, everybody feels sticky. You just are sort of waiting for it to be over which is not really the energy that the summer camp chaplains <laughs> are trying to provide in a worship service. It was a rough Vespers. Juliana and I never found a rhythm. Everything that the kids were feeling that made it hard for them to sit still, we were feeling too, making it hard for us to think of something worthwhile to say. Really, it was ultimately a pretty failed worship experience, and as you do at camp, we pivoted to snacks pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of that night. Woke up the next morning, as often happens with a storm, the weather was just beautiful, it was fantastic. We went through a sort of typical camp Monday, and then here we were, Monday night, standing in the JMO, trying to psych ourselves up to lead worship again, with this memory of it going so incredibly poorly still in our heads. As the sun was starting to set, the kids came down and sat down around us, worn out from a beautiful and perfect camp day. The weather was fantastic, the kids were getting to know each other, they were talking and laughing. That beautiful camp thing where exhaustion mixes with hot dogs, mixes with shared experience to form these tight little families, that was happening. The nervous, anxious noise of the first evening had given way to the warm, happy noise of new friends, new stories, and belonging. And then I looked over my shoulder and just about a hundred feet away from me, maybe less, in a little clearing between us and the lake were a family of deer, a mom and two little ones. Here was the Holy Spirit come to talk to us. I turned around to the kids and I said, hey, there's the sweetest family of deer over here. Come and look, but you have to be quiet. 
And they got up, wide-eyed, excited, and all stared at these deer. All 100 of these kids, from 8 years old to 18 years old, stood perfectly quietly. For the first time that week, we could hear the leaves in the trees. I could feel the wind on my face. I saw not only the deer, but the lake and the forest beyond them. I felt that feeling you get when you are in your favorite place, doing your favorite thing. I was overwhelmed with joy. We stood there in silence together for probably more than a minute. I had my guitar on me, and the chords for 10,000 reasons came to my heart. I began to play, and the kids joined me in singing, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Worship your holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I will worship your holy name. The kids made their way back inside, and sat or laid on the cool concrete. We sang some more, we read scripture, and then we talked about what it said and what we thought it meant, how it might apply to our week and then to our lives beyond. We prayed, we passed the peace. Those deer called us into worship that night. O magnify the Lord with me, the psalmist says, and let us exalt God's name together. So we are beginning a new worship series this morning called The Ways We Worship. Like Chad mentioned, we will, we will go slowly and take a look at each of the elements of a typical worship service. And we know the big players in worship, the music, the scripture, the sermon, the peace, the benediction. But this morning, our task is to consider the humble call to worship. It is often one of the first elements of the worship service, and its function is simply to remind us, or through call and response, invite us to remind ourselves some truth about God that calls us, reorients us, into a posture of worship, something that settles our minds and our hearts and allows us to be open to receiving God's reassurances and challenges for our lives. In our scripture this morning, Psalm 34, the psalmist shows us this formula of sorts for worship. The psalmist tells us that worship is never something we engage in by ourselves. Magnify the Lord with me, the psalmist says. Whether it is the beauty of a mountaintop that calls us into worship, the stillness of the morning, the smile of a newborn, the laugh of an old friend, worship is always, always our response to God's goodness and faithfulness in our lives. It is our response empowered by the Holy Spirit, and it is always communal. When we are called to worship, we tap into the constant worship of creation. We join our song to the continual praise of God's Spirit all around us. The psalmist reminds us also that our praise and worship is not a matter of when, but how. The psalmist answers the question, when should we praise God, with a resounding, always. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth, the psalmist says. So clearly, when is not an interesting question for the author of this psalm. But the question of how seems to matter much more. And the answer to how should we worship, what should our praise look like, comes in two parts. First, 
The psalm shows us that we worship God by turning our praise into a beautiful thing. Look to God and be radiant, says the psalmist. And we know this to be true since the dawn of time, our adoration of the divine has inspired humanity's most beautiful works. Songs, hymns, poetry, paintings, dance. Something about God's beauty inspires our own requires our own, even. Now, I'm not much of a singer, and I've never been able to draw or paint very well. Poetry has never really interested me, and I've never even seriously attempted dance. (laughs) But whenever I am called to worship, whenever I am overwhelmed by God's goodness in my life and inspired to respond in praise... I find that whatever I am doing, I sit up a little straighter, I show a little more kindness, I put in a little more effort, I double check, I tidy up, I give the best of myself to whatever it is that I am doing. Because I am doing it for and in light of God and God's steadfast love. And I think God finds that beautiful. I'm reminded here at Village are deacons and ushers and greeters. Their smiles, their handshakes, their attention to detail, their commitment to their task is beautiful to God. So that's the first thing. The psalm shows us that our praise of God, when we are called into worship, that worship should be beautiful. And second, The psalm instructs us to make special effort to let our praise for God's goodness be heard by those around us, specifically those who are in need of hope. The psalmist instructs us to make our boast in the Lord and let the humble hear and be glad. The word that's translated humble here could also be translated the poor or the afflicted the weak, the suffering. We know there are places in this world and there are times in all of our lives when we need the stories of others, when we need to hear the praise of others, when we need to gather with others and let their worship carry us until worship genuinely comes from our hearts again like we know it will in time. Our praise is not just for us, the psalmist reminds us, and it's not even just for God. It is also an inspiration, a hope, an anchor of truth for our neighbors and for those around us who need to hear it most. So there's our formula. God's goodness and faithfulness call us into the ongoing praise of creation, and not only to praise, but to praise with beauty and devotion, with the very best of ourselves. Because this praise is not just for us, and it's not even just for God, but we should make special effort that our stories of praise are heard by those around us, especially those who need to hear it most. And what is the promised result of this praise? What is the equal sign at the end of this formula pointing to? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Joy. Joy is the result. Joy that all consuming, elusive desire of ours is not really so elusive after all. Joy is not elusive on a mountaintop or in a wide, quiet forest or on the first warm day of spring or the first crisp day of fall. Joy is not elusive when the morning stars come to sing to us or when the village choir sings as beautifully and as powerfully as they did last Sunday. Joy is never elusive when the bells ring for us. 
Joy is not elusive when we praise. Joy is not elusive when we gather. Joy is as constant as the worship that echoes throughout creation since the very beginning of time. It is only our job to tap into it, to be reminded of it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, let us exalt God's name together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be seated. Friends, this worship service of ours always includes a moment of thanksgiving and gratitude. This is our chance, our opportunity to respond to God's many gifts in our lives, to recognize that all that we have comes from God, and that we are invited, encouraged to joyfully invest our resources in others for the common good. And so in gratitude for all that God has done in our lives, let us return back a portion for God's good work. I invite the ushers to come forward to collect our morning offer.
Please pray with me. Thank you, God of love, for the love and purpose you give this congregation. We are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ's presence in our lives. May our gifts and our giving represent a new spirit of sharing among us for the sake of all your children everywhere. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Please be seated. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We come to this table to celebrate life's triumph over death with our risen Savior. We come to this table to receive again the joy of fellowship with our God. We come to this table because God invites us and we cannot stay away. We come to this table to taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy God, we give you thanks and we praise you for your love, bringing order out of chaos, bringing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, and calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, raising the dead to life. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for Jesus the Christ, word made flesh, light of the world, living water, shepherd and gate, way and truth, bread of heaven, cup of salvation, resurrection and life. Take this bread and cup, O God, a feast of grace. Take our hearts and our lives an offering of praise. Spirit, come, come and live in us, in this bread, in this cup, in your people, one in the body, one in the blood, one with Christ, one in ministry, in this place, in every place, in this world, in the world to come. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power are yours, now and forever. We say together today this prayer as we wrap up our thanksgiving and our praise this prayer that you taught your disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Remember with me. On the night of his arrest, Jesus Christ took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. And in the same way, after the meal, Jesus took a cup from the table. And he gave thanks to God for it, and he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new cup, sealed in my blood, given for you, for all of you. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, here at Village, we take the bread together as a sign of our unity in the body of Christ. And we take the juice individually as a sign of our individual relationship with Christ. So as you receive the bread, we would ask you to hold it until we take it together. And as you receive the juice, we would ask you to go ahead and take that individually. Servers, you may please come forward.
body of Christ. Friends, please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for this meal shared in the spirit with Christ. 
who gives us love and peace eternal. We pledge ourselves to serve you even as Christ has served us as we make this prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen. Friends, before we begin uh, to sing our closing hymn, uh, it is a joyful thing that we do every Communion Sunday to take the elements from here out to the members of our community who are unable to be here this morning. We have some volunteers here today to come and take these baskets that are in front of our communion table to 38 members of our congregation who will be receiving communion elements today. So during our hymn, I invite those uh, home communion servers to please come forward and grab your baskets. Now let's all sing our uh, closing hymn together. apologize in advance. One of my favorite things about my church growing up is that for the benediction, we held hands. So as you are comfortable, I invite you to grab the hand of your neighbors around you. <laughs> Friends, I can't say it any better than the hymn. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing. So as you go from this place this week, I invite you to allow yourself to be called into worship however that happens for you. Because I promise you, the psalmist promises you that that is where joy lives. Now friends, go out to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>